Hello my friends, welcome to another Sinic video. In this one we're looking at the energy changes topic and this time looking at how to calculate energy change in uh, given exam questions and given reactions. This is a higher tier only skill. Let's go. In this part we're focusing purely on the energy changes within the molecules. So it's not the energy changes in the surroundings and their temperature and how that varies, but you would have looked at that in the last session. So we covered then what an exothermic reaction and what an endothermic reaction was. And now we're going to focus on how breaking bonds and making bonds will use and release energy. And the first key term that I would learn, it's not part of the specification, but it's a, a tool to help you to remember how this works, is this word bendomex, which is a bit weird. But basically the, the bendo part re refers to how the b breaking bonds is endothermic, which means it takes energy in. So breaking bonds requires energy. That's critical. The mex part is the M here referring to making of bonds, and that is exothermic, so that releases energy. So when we're breaking up bonds, we're requiring energy to do that. If you think about what that actually looks like, you're putting in energy to break the um, link between atoms. So it logically requires energy to do that. When they reform bonds, they become more stable and they release energy as a result. So breaking bonds requires en energy, bendo, making bonds releases energy, mex. And these energies can be calculated, so this is the higher tier skill. It's a slightly uh, numeracy based skill, but it's mostly problem solving too. So these energies can be calculated and the difference can be used to see if the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So whether it's releasing more energy than it's taken in, or whether it's releasing less energy than it's taken in. So has it gained energy or lost energy? Um, and a good example here is for burning of hydrogen with oxygen and releasing or making water. And for those of you who have done this, you know that if you burn hydrogen, it's pretty explosive, it's going to release a lot of energy. So we know it's an exothermic reaction, but can we prove that using bond energy in this calculation? So what we get typically given, and you'll see some exam questions to practice in a moment, um, we typically get given the symbol equation, which is usually balanced. In this case, it's not. We'll do that in a second. We also then tend to get given uh, how the atoms are structured. So they're not looking for you to demonstrate your knowledge of what these molecules looks like and not asking you to demonstrate your skill in balancing equations. They're asking you to calculate the energy change in a reaction. And GCC papers are fantastic at doing that. They separate out the skills, so they'll typically ask you to demonstrate one skill at a time um, and give you marks where you can demonstrate that. So you'll get given this kind of setup. We then have H2. We can see um, that's a hydrogen to hydrogen bond. It's a single stick, so it's a single bond. And then in this table over here, which you, you get given T, you'll get given it depending on the question. Again, I'll talk you through that in a second. Um, you've got a hydrogen to hydrogen here, and it shows that in that bond, there are 436 kilojoules of energy per mole. Uh, you might not have seen the units written like this before, but the to the power of minus one, just means the same as kilojoules per mole. It's just how it's written in chemistry. The double bonded oxygen here, again, you've got another bond energy. So that double bonded oxygen is 498 kilojoules per mole. And then we've got water. And water has two of these H to O bonds. In fact, it's the same on the other side. It's just reversed. So H to O and O to H. So we have two of those. So in the water molecule, we'd have two times by 468 kilojoules of energy per mole. Now, if the energy released when the bonds form is greater than the energy needed to break the bond, so if the energy released when we form uh, the water is greater than the energy required to break hydrogen up and oxygen up, then that reaction will be exothermic. If the energy released when forming bonds is less than the energy needed to break the bonds, it's in effect taken more energy in to, to break these than it has released when they've been reformed, then the molecule will have gained energy. It will be an endothermic reaction. And that's critical for us to think about moving on. So let's look at how to calculate this. And I've got four steps together. I'm going to talk you through this example. I'm going to talk you through one more example. And then I'm going to let you have a go uh, with some support, which I'm going to kind of slowly pull away towards the last question, which you can try. So the first one here, exactly just as we saw, we've got H2 plus O2 burning them together to make water. 
which is going to release energy. We know that because it's a, a reaction that you've probably done. But we need to balance this first. Um, as I say, it's not a typical skill that you need. Um, but we've got two hydrogens on the left, two oxygens on the left. Only We've got two on the right of hydrogen, but only one oxygen. So we'll double that. We need to then double the number of hydrogen too. Balanced. Job done. So the reason I wanted to show you that we have to balance this because that sh changes how many bonds we have of each of these molecules. So now not only do we have just one H to H, we now have two hydrogen to hydrogen bonds on the left side. We've still only got one oxygen to oxygen, but we now have two waters. So actually in total, we have on the left two hydrogen to hydrogen. So we have uh, two of these. We have one of the double bonded oxygen, and on the right hand side, we now actually have um, one, two, three, four of the hydrogen to oxygen or oxygen to hydrogen bonds. So, step one is to calculate the total number of energy, the total amount of energy needed to break the bonds in the reactants. So, we want to total up the amount of energy held in these bonds from our table. So, we have two H to H, which is two times by. 436. That's the first step. Then we're going to add to that our oxygen to oxygen bond, which is 498, but there's only one of those. So 1 times by 498, and um, that's obviously going to be 498. And this top one is going to be 872. Don't need to write any units at the moment. But then we're going to sum that. We're going to give the total of that, which um, we can work out in a second. And then on the other side, we're then going to do step two to calculate the total energy released when the bonds and the products form. So we have four of the hydrogen to oxygen bonds, these ones. So 468, four times by 468, which is 1,872. So that there is our total for the right side, for the energy released when the bonds are reformed. And on the left hand side, the energy required to break the bonds is 1370. So we have done stage one, we've calculated the left side, that's all 1370 kilojoules per mole. On the right side we've got 1872, so stage two is done as well. And stage three, we want to work out the total energy change, which is the energy in, which is how much energy we're putting in, which is this one, it's how much we're putting in to break the bonds. 1370 and we're going to do minus take away the energy out 1872 because that's the energy that was released when the bonds are reformed now if we total this up 1370 take away 1872 gives us minus 502 so these molecules in this reaction have lost 502 kilojoules per mole of energy so if it's negative, it's exothermic because it's released energy from the molecules to the surroundings. The surroundings have got hotter, but these molecules have lost energy. So therefore, this is exothermic, absolutely exothermic. If that number was instead positive, it would show that it's taken in energy from the surroundings. It's gained energy, these molecules. And so therefore, the reaction would be endothermic. OK, let's look at one other example. I'm going to work through with you and then you can try one for yourself. Here we're looking at another reaction. This one's also quite basic. It's not got too many bonds to think about and it's perfect for us to work through. The exam questions that you face probably will have more bonds involved, like you might get methane that you need to work out the number of, uh, the amount of energy that's involved in the bonding. Um, but for this one, nice and simple. So this is balanced for us already. We've got H2 plus Cl2 going to make two hydrochloric acid molecules. Um, so for H2, a common misconception is that the two part tells us that we have two bonds. It doesn't. It's two atoms and it's the bond between it that we're focusing on. For chlorine, again, you've got two atoms of chlorine, Cl2, and one bond in between. And two hydrochloric acid, two HCl, means we have two of these hydrogen to chlorine bonds. And you'll see in the exam questions, you tend to get given these structures as the bond diagrams. So that it's nice and easy to work out how many bonds there actually are. So stage one, working out the amount of energy that we need to put in to break up the reactants, to break their bonds. So we just need to add the amount of energy that's held within each of the bonds that we have in the reactants. So we have one hydrogen to hydrogen bond, which is one times by 436. We have one chlorine to chlorine bond, which is one times by 243. 
if we total those together we can find out that we have 679 kilojoules per mole of energy in those reactants that we're reacting so we have to put in that much energy to break those bonds in the products we have two hcl bonds so we have two times by 432 so we have a total amount of energy coming out of reforming these bonds of 864 kilojoules per mole now to work out the energy change we do the energy in minus the energy out or the energy in the reactants uh, taking away the energy in the products so stick a minus sign there and you get your total 679 minus 864 gives us a total energy change of minus 184.85. So this is an exothermic reaction because it's losing energy from the molecules and that's going to the surroundings. Wonderful, simple. So the next question is you've got three exam questions to try. Each one will progressively remove this scaffolding. So it's about practicing and learning how to do it. But you will find that for those that examples that are there there are many more bonds than we have looked at here um, but the principle is just the same it's a nice simple process add together how much energy there is in the bonds on the left hand side the reactants compare it to the right hand side by taking the products away from the reactants and you'll get your answer so here's the first question and as I said it's, there are more bonds involved so first make sure that you total up how many there are for the reactants Make sure that also you're paying attention to these balancing numbers. So this two is telling us that we have two of the whole molecule. So there are one, two, three carbon to hydrogen bonds on one molecule. So in total, there are six carbon to hydrogen molecules, uh, to carbon to hydrogen bonds. In terms of the carbon to oxygen, there's only one in that molecule, but there are two overall. And the same for the oxygen here. There's only one double bond to oxygen bond in that molecule, but we have three of those. So make sure that you're tasting them up properly, um, add them together on each side. Uh, I'll pause here, or you should pause it here, and you should then try the question, and then we'll work through it together. So if you've had a go, for the carbon to hydrogen, we have three in each molecule, but we have then two of the whole molecule. So there are six of those times by the energy in the bond, 412. For the carbon to oxygen, we only have one in each molecule, but overall we have two of those because there's two molecules so two times by 360 if the oxygen to hydrogen we have one of those bonds and so one times by 464 if we total that up we get 5000 oh wait we haven't added in the oxygen good spot i know you were about to tell me that so the oxygen to oxygen double bond i was going to say that doesn't look like it's a big number three times by 805 now we are talking so the total there is 5614 that's reactant side in the product side we have again totaling these up we have one two times by two of the carbon to oxygen double bond so we have four of those four times by 805 that's a strong bond too and in the water we have one two oxygen to hydrogen bonds but we have four of those so a total of eight eight times by 464 and if we add those together we get 6932 if we take the reactants from the products sorry no products from the reactants we get five equals minus 1318 so that's releasing a lot of energy and it's exothermic we can double check that a little bit of chemistry knowledge looking at the equation itself we've got methanol plus oxygen so this is burning methanol if you burn methanol it releases lots of heat this is the amount of heat in kilojoules per mole that we're releasing when we burn methanol for your second question here for you to try, I've stripped back the support a little bit, but you're following the same process. So give it a good go. It's the same kind of setup. You've got here a different molecule though that's going to get reacting with oxygen. So this one in this case is ethanol and it's reacting with oxygen, so it's burning. So that gives you a good clue as to what kind of reaction it will be. Um, but follow the usual steps that you had before and see how you get on. So stage one here, we're going to be adding up all the bonds and therefore working out the amount of energy that we put, need to put in to break all of them on the reactant side. So for the carbon to hydrogen, we have one, two, three, four, five of those. So five times by 413. 
for the C to H. We then have one carbon to carbon, which is 347. We only have one of those. We then have a carbon to oxygen. That's one times by 358. We then have one oxygen to hydrogen, which is one times by 467. And then we have three of the oxygen to oxygens, which is 495. If we total those all up, we get 4,722. For stage two, we're going to work out the amount of energy released when the new bonds form. So we have in this carbon dioxide two double bond carbon to oxygen, but there are two of those molecules. So there are a total of four of those bonds. So four times by 799. And then we have three water molecules. So we have six of the O to H bonds, which are 467. So six times by 467. And if you total that up, you get 5,998 kilojoules per mole. Then we're going to do the comparison between the two. So we do the left-hand side, the reactants, take away the right-hand side, the products. So 4,722 take away 5,998, which gives us minus 1,276. And that shows us therefore that because it's negative, the molecules are losing energy to the surroundings. It must be an exothermic reaction. There we go, there's our three or four marks. For this final question, I've taken out the scaffold completely. You're on your own with this one, um, but it is a little bit easier because it tells you what number to work towards. But give it a try and see how you get on. We'll work through it in a mo. So again, for the reactants, we've got one, two, three, four carbon to hydrogen bonds. So four times by 413, we have one of the chlorine to chlorine bond, one times by uh, for 243. So we can total those up in a second. In the products, we have one, two, three of the carbon to hydrogen. We have one carbon to chlorine, which is one times by 327. And we want have one hydrogen chloride. One to hydrogen chloride is one times by 432. So we total up both of these sides and we take the left side from the right side, take away uh, the products from the reactant, sorry. You should get a total of 1,895 on the left hand side and 1,998, so you that year, 1,998 on the right hand side. If we take the reactants, uh, the, we take the products from the reactants, we do 1,895 minus 1,998 should give us the answer minus 103, which it does. So that's our way of showing that for the enthalpy change, which just means the energy change, uh, the, the change is minus 103 kilojoules, which therefore is exothermic. So all of these examples we've seen are exothermic. If it was a positive result, it would be endothermic. But endothermic reactions are more rare in these kind of questions, but they may well throw one at you. Anyway, I hope you did well with those. If not, go through, watch over the guide again um, and give these practice examples a try again. They're good questions to get right. If you found it helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos that come out. And uh, do check out the other ones in this topic. We've got chemical cells and fuel cells for the separate science students among you. And we've also got exothermic and endothermic reactions, including reaction profiles. So check them out.